So in this video, we're going to look at an example question from a paper uh, to do with scatter graphs and the PMCC. Uh, and just to start off, here's a reminder of what this um, Pearson's correlation coefficient is all about. It's just a strength, a measure of the strength and direction of the relationship between two different variables. So you can see that and it, we call, we measure it, we call it R. So when R is zero, there's no correlation, no relationship or link between the two different axes, the two different variables on the different axes. Um, when it is positive, um, you can see on those images on the left of the center, um, then if it's almost a, almost a direct straight line, everything's very tight and together, then you have R equal to one and you can have anywhere in between. You can see the points getting more spread out as you get towards zero. And then the opposite on the right hand side. So they have got a negative gradient. They have got a negative correlation. And again, you can and you can go from any value up to negative one where all the points are in a straight line. So your correlation coefficient can go from negative one to positive one and anywhere in between which leads us nicely on to the next question. 3a, so which of the following cannot be a correct value for a product moment correlation coefficient? Circle your answer. So here the answer is going to be, if we have a look, um, just get onto the pen, nope, pen, that's fine. Um, this one's okay, it's a negative one. So it'd be a negative gradient. This is zero, no correlation at all. This is a positive one, but it's less than one. This one, sorry, I should have circled <laughs> just the last one. This one is the one that it can't be because it's greater than one. So maybe if I rub those out, it will be clearer. There we go, circle and square. Um, yeah, so that's the answer. It's not between negative one and one. So this um, is another, the next part of the question, and we've got to match up these scatter diagrams to these PMCCs. So the first thing we can notice is which ones are positive and which ones are negative. So A is going up, that's a positive one. And D, I think, is, is going up, it's not as tightly knit together as A, but I still think it's going up. So I'll say that's a positive one, that's a positive one. B is definitely negative. Uh, and C, to be honest, doesn't really look like there's much correlation. So if we go and look over here, the smallest number is actually this one here, 0 0.0153, it's negative but it's a very small correlation. There's not much link between those two axes. So I'm gonna go for C here. We know B is negative, so the only other bit negative one is B. And then we just need to decide which of these two positive ones is which. And A is much more tightly, it near it, or looks more like a line. So that's gonna be the stronger number, which is 0 0.9. And the other one that's left, uh, D will be 0 0.619. So we don't need to work anything out, but we just need to match up using information such as positive, negative, and how close to a straight line they are. 3C, the scatter diagram shows the correlation between the speed of blades of a windmill and wind speed. Bill looks at the diagram and says, increasing the speed of the blades of the windmill causes the wind speed to increase. So there definitely is a correlation between the two values. We can see that, but we just have to be careful as to which is causing which. And I think in this case, it's probably the wind speed causing the speed of the blades of a windmill to increase rather than the other way round. So we've got to apply some common sense to it. So Bill is not correct. It's the other way round. This wind speed causes the blades to get faster. So here we have a different question. We have some data for Alex driving home from work. We've got information on what time he leaves, after, well, the number of minutes after 7.30 a.m. 
uh, and comparing it to his journey time. So the first thing we're asked to do is complete the scatter diagram by plotting the last two points. So we can look on the table, I think I need a pen, uh, it's these two points here that are missing. So we want 30 against 23, so if I find 30 here and 23 here, and then we want 20 and 27, so that is, oops, about here, sorry that's rather messy, um, something like that, I'm sure yours will be neater. Then it says it is appropriate to exclude two of the points when calculating the equation of the regression line of J on T and identify the two points. So what we're looking for here is, or yeah, is outliers, things that don't follow the general pattern of the regression line. And we can see that we've got quite a nice line here, were it not for this point here and this point here. So the points that we're going to exclude are 10, 21, which is this one corresponding to this one here. I don't know if I can write and fit it in. 1021. And the other one is 25. It's the one next to it, 38. So I'll write a bit bigger. 25, 38. So they're outliers. They don't follow the general pattern of the rest of the data. And the next part of the question, we are asked to um, exclude the outliers and calculate the equation of the regression line. So if you can't remember how to do that, look at the video on the Padlet. Um, and we, we are going to exclude, let me get the pen, these two values because they're outliers. And once you've put it all into your calculator, then you should get something like this. So this tells us that the PMCC is negative 0 0.98 or 0 0.99 if we round it uh, but what they've asked us for is the equation of the regression line which is the y equals a plus bx part so if we swap the a in the equation here for the a we've got here we will have if we round it to two significant figures we'll have 36 and then we've got a negative 0 0.39 so we will have, we're swapping that B into the B in the equation. So negative 0 0.39x, just subbing those A and Bs into here. But actually, because we're not using X and Y, we're using J and T. Let's even swap those over. So J is 36, take away 0 0.39t, and that's our equation. So the next thing we're asked to do is to draw the regression line, uh, which we've just worked out the equation of. So here it is. So we've got T along the bottom axis, J up the side. And a useful one to always work out is when T is zero, because when T is zero, J will be 36, take away 0 0.39 times zero. And we know anything times zero is zero. So when T is zero, j is 36. And then we can sub in a different number in place of t. Uh, let's go to somewhere down the end, 40 or 45 would be good, because um, then we've got a, a good distance between them. So when t is, let's go when t is 40, and substitute it in here. So when t is 40, j is 36, take away 0 0.39 times 40. So we can stick that in the calculator, 36 take away 0.39 times 40. And we get 20.4. So when T is 40, J will be 20.4. So 40, it's very close, to be quite honest, isn't it? 20.4. It's probably slightly lower than that cross that's there. And I can't draw it very neatly. Um, and then what you'll do, which I'm not going to attempt because it won't be very neat and I haven't got a ruler. Um, but then you join up that point and that point and use your ruler to draw your regression line through there. So you've just worked out two points that lie exactly on this regression line. 
and then you can plot it on the graph.